Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Morgan Renee tuning in with you all for another reading um, with story time with more of my and trying to sleep in the bed you made. Excuse me. I got all these burps as soon as I'm on here. Um, yeah, so we're in chapter 13. I'm going to hop right into it. The phone might open me because you know how this boy that he be doing. So we'll see. We going to see. All right, chapter 13, the doo-doo is knee-deep. The quencher arrived in St. Stephen safe and sound. Here's your ticket. Pat had the time and envelope. I ordered you a car for 6.15 tomorrow morning. I'll be down Monday with the director. Pat waved at the cigarette smoldering in her ashtray, then stubbed it out. Damn, this smoke smells nasty. They must be stale. Cecile was ecstatic with their improved sales figures after the first quencher spot and ordered a new ad cycle in time for a late summer debut. The client wanted Graham Maxwell, the flamboyant Hollywood darling, to direct again, even though his fees were killing their budget. Pat made it her mission to bring the numbers in line and stumbled on a little-known island of St. Stephen's at the site from the door. I mean, excuse me, and stumbled on the little-known island of St. Stephen's as the site for the shoot. She, re she negotiated rock-bottom hotel rates and got permit fees waived, earning her kudos from Tom and the account execs. Did you look at the director's reel I left you? Previewing sample tapes was one of Pat's favorite duties. She got a great she got great footage, zero attitude, and she hungry. Her rate is dirt cheap. Remind me when I get back. It's after six and I gotta go. Ciao. If I just sit here a minute, I'll get a second win. Pat still had marketing reports to read, but she'd been feeling queasy since she got a dirty doll from a street vendor for lunch. She rested her head on her folded arms. The drone of a vacuum cleaner work, woke her. Eight o'clock, her limbs were leaden. I don't have time to be sick. I'll go home and come in at seven tomorrow. Pat could hardly drag to the bus stop. She paused in front of a drugstore. Maybe I need vitamins. Maybe she pregnant. We know where it's going. The flowery window display caught her eye. Feel fresher, longer, with extra protection. Maybe that's my problem. It's gotta be time for, when was my period due? She rifled her bag for her date book, her pulse pounding like conga beats at her temples. Two weeks ago, April, May, June, she counted days in 28, all the way to the asterisk she made on the day she was due. She flipped forward two weeks and stared at the day she had marked in red PJNY bar. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pat hadn't seen PJ since the week before his graduation. At the time, she was on a tight post-production deadline for Tacia, so attending the ceremony was out of the question, but he drove up for a private commencement exercise. The, the evening he left, he was quieter than usual. They talked a lot about the decisions he made for the short term, like moving back home and accepting an associate's position with his father's law firm. Your father's a lawyer, too? Parents were among Pat's least favorite conversation topics, so she hadn't asked me any questions about the Elder Jackson. He was a judge for years, but a big firm offered him a partnership and he jumped at the book. I probably won't stay there long, but it's a check until I get on my feet. Then he pulled her onto his lap. But I need your help. Whatever I can do is what I'm going to ask you not to do. Until July, I'll be cramming for the bar exam, or should I say exams, since I've decided to take both Philadelphia and Pennsylvania and New York. New York? Pat tried not to read too much into it. How can I make it easier on you? by not calling and understanding when I don't. Talking to you makes me want to be with you, and after I hang up, I'm hard-pressed to concentrate on my torts. I have to focus, Patricia. I'll make it up to you as soon as I hand in my last test booklet, I promise. Pat understood sacrifice for a worthy goal, so as hard as it had been, she didn't phone, but she missed him terribly. Missed his impromptu visits when they could both steal the time. Missed the way her heart fluttered as soon as she heard his voice on the phone. An odd moment snatched from the bedlam of her days. She thought she was in love with PJ. It's my job. I'm under a lot of stress. It has to be. But she passed up the bus stop, ducked into the bookstore in the corner, and headed for the health aisle. You should be refitted for your diagram if you gain or lose 10 pounds or more. The words shimmying on the page, mocking her. I remembered if they told me that at, at student health. I know I would, but stress can dispute the cycle too. She assured herself that's all it was, but as soon as she got home, she checked the yellow pages and found a women's clinic close to the office. 
twice an hour for the rest of the evening. She trotted anxiously to the bathroom, hoping for even the faintest hint of pink on the toilet paper. When the doors of the clinic opened, she was waiting with her pee in a well-washed Stridex jar. By noon at the latest, I'll know. Pat wanted to rip the hands off the clock by 10.30. She chewed out the bell lady because she never had any grapefruit juice left when she got to the 15th floor. On her way back to her desk, she ran into an assistant in the art department who showed her storyboards he just finished for Snuggables disposable diapers. Diapers. She almost lost it looking at the cuddly, gurgling babies. I can't be. And popped into the ladies' room to splash water on her face, check for the pink. Nothing. Stay busy. Turn a little bit because I see it. Uh, keep trying to peek in. Okay. Um, stay busy. Pat cashed her check at the bank, filed all the papers on her desk, and sharpened a box of pencils. Then it was time. I did what I was supposed to do. I was careful. It has to be negative. She walked her fingers to the phone. I'm calling for the results of that test is positive. Would you like to make an appointment to see a doctor? Pat felt like she was drowning. Uh, I'll have to call back. She slammed down the phone. Positive. There's not a damn thing positive about this. She remembered her last weekend with PJ, how happy she'd been. Now she wished it had been the day before, the week after. Not at all, but wishing on all the stars in the sky would not change the fact that she, Patricia Ellen Reed, college graduate, good girl with a golden future, was knocked up. Mm. What am I going to do? How am I going to tell PJ? She wanted to speak to him at that moment. I can't tell him right before the bar. He's worried enough. She stumbled through the afternoon. On the way home, she bought oatmeal cookies and a quart of ice cream, a roast beef sandwich, and a bag of potato chips. She dragged into her apartment, crawled into bed, and pulled the sheet over her head, feeling like a ticking bomb. I live in a sublet. Counting today's paycheck, I'll have $110 after rent and student loans. I can't have a baby. Can I? What if PJ wants it? What if he doesn't? Do I? She flipped her radio to all the news stations to hear voices other than the ones in her head. Bits of murmur, murder and mayhem came over the airwaves. My life could be worse. That didn't help. Hazy, hot, and humid. So what? In sports, for the second day in a row, a run by colorful rookie Marcus Cat in the Hat Carter boosted the Orioles past the Yanks. In the spring, when she read that the Orioles brought Marcus up, she had hoped this time it was for good. Right now, the idea of him swatting at a ball with a wooden pole in front of 50,000 fans at Yankee Stadium just seemed crazy. That's crazy as me being pregnant. <laughs> the weekend passed in a haze of sleep, food, and agonizing self-torture. She dreamed about baby Gail being thrown away like garbage and my raised fat hugging arms. In the middle of the night, Pat got up and stared at her face in the bathroom mirror, searching for traces of either Verner or Turner. They would be grandparents. That was almost funny since neither one had been a parent to her. It'll have to be different, or what's the point? By late su Sunday, she made up her mind to tell PJ a week from Wednesday after the New York bar. We can talk it out then. What difference will a few days make? On Monday morning, Pat arrived at the airport early and positioned herself so she'd see Graham Maxwell when he arrived. She personally arranged a car to pick up the director, but it was 10 minutes to flight time and no Maxwell. Don't panic yet. Check out, check with the car service. When the dispatcher told her nobody answered at Maxwell's address, she called his loft, then his studio. Finally, she reached his rep, who calmly reported that Maxwell had run into technical problems with his latest film on location in Manitoba. Manitoba? He has to start shooting in St. Stephen's tomorrow. When is he leaving? I don't know. He won't talk to me, the rep answered sheepishly. Pat slammed the receiver down so hard that several people nearly jumped. Think, girl, think. She had a missing director, a missing period, and she wanted to crawl into a hole until she could talk to PJ, but she couldn't blow this. She took a moment to regroup, then called Tom in St. Stephen's, who lost it on the other end. Don't get on the damn plane. Go to the office. I need you in central location. Pat found a message to call Tom on her desk. Maxwell had cried as he told Tom a stuntman was killed in a car rig to explode. Oh, man. Maxwell had cried as he told Tom a stuntman was killed in a car rig to explode. The set was under investigation and he couldn't leave. We'll sue him for every dime he even thinks about making, Tom rattled off. Tom rattled off a list of directors for her to call. See who can get here tonight and how much it's going to cost. Chris posed at the door. Heard the doo-doo is knee deep. Care for a shovel? Pat shot him a lethal look, but she heard him snickering as he walked away. It took an hour to find out that nobody on Tom's list was available. Her work, 
on this spot wouldn't mean squat without a director. Pat spied the card on her bulletin board. Tom hadn't seen her work, but what choice did they have? Pat had her real rush messenger to the office. Tom went ballistic when, when she called him with the update. Nobody knows this woman. Look, we're past the 24 hour cancellation on the talent. So we'll pay whether you shoot the ads or snapshots for your scrapbook. Fire me if I'm wrong, but do you have a better idea? Get her real for Zabriskie and get back to me, Tom said. It's on the way. Zabriski was silent as Pat ran the reel. When it was over, she flicked on the lights. We come in at budget if we run into delays. If we make this on schedule, we come in under and impress the client and how well we handle a crisis. Pat took a breath. I think her style is right for this project. And you have years in the business and your reputation to stand on. Is that right? I've got one year in my intuition, but I'll stand on my suggestion. Followers are expendable, huh? Okay, I'm leaving. Zabriski pushed his glasses on the top of his head. Have her here at one. Yes. The delirium of the moment took Pat's mind off her troubles. Zabriski called a team Tasty. Ta oh, team Tasty. Tasty. I've been saying Tasty. It's T A S T E A. So, team Tasty meeting in the rubber room. The atmosphere was like four ring circus, which the snarling lions ready to devour the trapeze act. That's when Zabriski made Pat the ringmaster. She had no time to plan what to say or to be scared. Pat flattened her palms on the table and summoned her sonorous alto. She showed the reel, gave the spiel, and time on the speakerphone defended past judgment. The director showed up on time, laid out her vision of the commercial like she'd been contemplating this shoot for weeks. By 3.30, Pat and her new find were heading to Kennedy. It was a tough six days in the tropics. Pat was sick every morning, the client was edgy, and Tom yelled more than usual. But when they got back and saw the raw film, Pat's praises were sung on high. Althea treated her to dinner. Pat almost broke down and told her secret, but she wouldn't discuss it with anyone before PJ, and that talk was blessedly just two days away. Pat spent most of Tuesday in post-production meetings. When she answered her phone a little after five, she figured it was legal returning her call. I didn't realize how much I missed you until now. When she heard PJ's voice, Pat wanted to cry and blurt out her news. Keep it together. I've been thinking about you all day. I wish I could say the same, but this test is a killer. I'm staying at the same hotel where the test is being given, and I barely um, have the strength to ride the elevator to my room. But fortunately, there's only part two standing between you and me in a happy reunion. Should I swing by the office tomorrow or see you at home? Why don't we meet for a drink? You'll probably need lots of drinks. She wanted to start out on neutral territory. He resisted at first, but finally agreed to meet in the lobby bar. 5.30ish. I can't wait to see you and lose myself in your arms. At the dot of five on Wednesday, Pat was out the door. It was the first time in a year she left the office on time. She didn't know what to expect. Worse, she still didn't know what she wanted. It used to be clear as day that she was striving and sacrificing for her career so she could excel and become someone her father would be proud to claim, someone exactly the opposite of Verna. Pregnancy, love, marriage, they weren't part of the blueprint she had so carefully drafted. But then she thought of PJ and let the traffic sign flash, don't walk, then walk, and back again before she remembered she had to put one foot in front of the other to cross the street. She wanted PJ to take her hand and make her feel as close to him as she did when they talked in whispers and their bodies melted together. She tried not to taste how badly she wanted him to look at her with love in those amber eyes. Is that? Patricia Reed, I haven't seen you since Martha's Vineyard. How long has it been? Edwina Lewis Gush, looking like the reigning Miss It. What is he doing with her? I can't believe it. Running into you right on the street. They do say New York is really a small town. You look so different. Edwina caught Pat's eyes glued to... Wait a minute. What? Patricia Reed, I haven't seen you since Martha's Vineyard. How long has it been? Edwina Lewis Gush, looking like the rain and miss it. What is he doing with her? I can't believe it. Running into you right on the street. They do say New York is a really small town. You look so different. Edwina Cart's cat's eyes glued to PJ. I want you to meet my husband, Peter Jackson. You did you didn't meet on the vineyard that summer, did you? Edwina looked from one to the other, but nobody answered. No, you were working for the congressman that summer. Peter and I didn't meet until the next year anyway. He's an attorney in Philadelphia now. He's taking the New York bar so he can practice here too. I thought I'd come up on the last day and surprise him since he's been working so hard. We got married right after his graduation and we haven't even taken a honeymoon yet. 
She squeezed herself around PJ's arm. We'll fix that soon, isn't that right, honey? For a second, Pat's world stood still. There was no sound, no air, just enough time to please, let it shift back on its axis and make what she thought was real to be a cool mirage. Uh, nice to meet you. Patricia, is it? PJ wore aviator shades that masked his eyes. He looked just past her, down the street, put out his hand. Pat knew she would never forget this clammy handshake because it infused every cell of her body with a hate-like venom. He planned to meet me tonight like nothing had changed. What adorable earrings, Pat. She had on the silver ribbons PJ had given her for Christmas. They're just like the ones Pete and Mother and I got for the secretaries at his father's firm last Christmas. Mmm. So PJ had given her secretarial leftovers, and around Edwina's neck was the necklace Pat had helped him pick out for his mother. Edwina babbled a bit longer about shopping for their new apartment. Then she said something about getting together and nudged PJ to give Pat one of his cars. Who knows? I really like to live in New York. That's why I pushed him to take the bar here, too. Okay, I'm going to have to stop here because i got to get ready to go. But this is crazy. This is crazy. She's pregnant about this man. He out here but a whole life. Whew, Lord. All right. I'll return later. Mm.